Okay, hi there, and welcome to a session looking at 25 mark questions in the Edexcel Synoptic paper. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll take a look at a particular question and just think about some of the, the tips and hints and things for writing a good answer, mixing analysis and evaluation and using extracts well. So the Edexcel paper 3, 25 mark essay question, the two of them at the end of each of the deadly response questions, they're marked on levels and there are 16 KA marks and nine evaluation marks. My advice is to focus on trying to build three main points, both analysed and evaluated. Of course, in a synoptic paper, synopticity means you have to provide at least one micro, and at least one macro essay. Now, many teachers say that two points made, one micro, one macro is fine, providing the depth of evaluation and the depth of chains of reasoning in your analysis is sufficiently strong, and I don't have a problem with that at all. Oftentimes, uh, people do struggle to put the depth of evaluation in, so it might be better to aim for three points analysed and three points evaluated. Diagrams can be useful, particularly if they're contextually useful or related to the extracts. Remember to label them, to show equilibrium points, and always draw to the axes to get their full credit. And make sure, because this is a data response paper, that you draw from the extract materials if applicable. If you have time, try to come to a brief final reason judgment. Uh, but this, the main focus has to be on getting these analysis and evaluation points across both micro and macro. So there are many skills that are harnessed in the exam, knowledge, application, analysis and evaluation. I'll also try to give you a couple of hints as to how to signpost where your answer is going. The question we're going to take a look at is this one, evaluate the likely micro and macroeconomic impact of a decision by the UK government to introduce a tax on carbon emissions. Quite that will be a significant policy decision, uh, perhaps to leave the EU emissions trading scheme and in its place uh, introduce a tax on emissions. Uh, when you, if you're watching this on the YouTube video, it might be a good idea to, to just press the pause button as we go through each of the extracts and have a, have a read through. So I'll try and capture for the essence of each of the extracts that I've put together. One is an extract from The Guardian back in the summer of 2017, in which uh, a number of significant, a number of high-profile eminent economists, including Nobel laureate uh, Joseph Stiglitz, argued that the governments, governments needed to move quickly to increase the price of carbon to, in order to meet uh, the, the targets for climate change. Now, the essence of this extract is that they were arguing that a major increase in, a, in the carbon price was needed, a tax of $100 per tonne by 2030. Uh, at the moment, the European Union trading scheme, where obviously um, carbon permits are traded, the market mechanism, the price is, uh, has been for some time a little bit below €10 Euros per tonne, quite a low figure. Extract 2, again, just press the pause button if you want to read through it. But Extract 2 uh, hints that emissions in the UK are falling. Uh, they fell by 3% in 2017. They've, they've uh, fallen um, significantly below 1990 levels. Uh, they're 38% below 1990 levels. One of the big factors has been a big fall in coal use. which now accounts for less than 6% of total primary energy consumed. Government's pledged to close all coal-fired power stations by 2025, but there's still a long way to go to meet the target of 80% reduction of CO2 from 1990 levels. Extract 3, again, quite a bit of text here, so press the pause button if you want to go through the, the text more carefully. So this extract from March 2018 is a, a, a speech by a government minister, the Energy and Climate Change Minister Claire Perry, who reported to Parliament that the UK would stay inside the emissions trading scheme until 2020, but that it's unclear beyond that point whether uh, Britain will stay in the system or whether it'll bring in its own uh, policies for pricing carbon for cutting emissions. Notice there in the extract in the middle, can you see this? Perry stressed Britain remains committed to the use of a carbon price as a key component of its decarbonisation strategy. Now, over in France, a newly, relatively newly installed French president, Emmanuel Macron, has said that Paris is going to be lobbying for uh, a higher carbon price in the EU, maybe towards the UK carbon minimum price of £18 per tonne. 
And uh, France has promised to set its own national floor price at mm-hmm. 44 euros per tonne uh, in the next few years. So the context is in the extracts. Try to use the extracts when you can to build an answer. The question, reminder of the question, of course, is the evaluation, the micro macro economic impact of the UK government bringing in, bringing in a carbon tax. So here we go. Uh, this is a suggested answer. It's not a perfect one. And I'm sure you'll be able to find ways of improving it as we go through. First thing to do, I think, is define key terms. If carbon tax is in the question, it should be defined. Carbon tax is an environmental tax, nearly always on producers, based on each tonne of CO2 emitted. Then a little signposting phrase. I think it's really important in the exam to signpost the use of extracts, maybe by just underlining that you're using an extract. As you can see here, as extract one says, pardon me, as extract one says, some economists say that taxes of $100 per tonne could be needed. It would mean a carbon price of £75. I've then gone on to extract three. I've worked out that that price would be over 10 times higher than the current carbon emissions price to get some application box. So a carbon tax of a big level would be a significant intervention, which would clearly have effects. Now, for each point, build, analysis, and then evaluation. So I'm starting off with a microeconomic effect. And again, signpost it clearly. So one effect would be to increase costs of producers such as airlines, energy suppliers, steel makers, for example, businesses that use a lot of carbon. Then my chain of reasoning, a tax per per tonne of carbon would add directly to their variable costs. And this would lead to a connective phrase there. This would lead to an upward shift in both marginal cost and average cost. Assuming constant AR and MR, this would lead to a fall in industry profits and also higher prices for consumers. And then a little example, airfare is likely to go up or the cost of car making might go up. Again, a little bit of signposting there. My analysis diagram shows, just signpost for the examiner, make it nice and clear and crisp. My analysis diagram shows the effect of a carbon tax on steel producers. Fall in profits and indeed possible losses, given the price competition in the global market, from countries such as China and Germany, what have you, could cause job losses and plant closures. Build analysis. Diagrams can be very useful here. Here's a diagram showing the market for steel. Initially, this steel maker is making at the profit maximizing point, it's making a, a profit, as you can see by the shaded area. Prices above cost. Uh, a carbon tax would increase their costs, therefore, marginal cost and average cost would shift upwards as shown. The profit maximizing price would go up, the output would fall. They're charging a high price. Make reference to consumer effects there. Equally, the costs are higher. So you can see in the green shaded area here that the level of profit has gone down. Just make a little contrast here with the profit beforehand. You can see that the green area is less than the old yellow area. So the micro analysis could be that consumers face higher prices and producers suffer a fall in profits as a consequence of this policy. However, then we have to evaluate. Leave a couple of lines. Leave two lines on the exam script and then build your evaluation. However, although carbon tax would increase costs, it would also be a strong incentive for businesses to invest money in research and development and perhaps fast forward innovation so that their carbon emissions are reduced. Indeed, little connective word there, one of the main long term aims of a carbon tax is for businesses to do just that. Uh, Go back to my theory, the, the pollution tax creates a price signal and businesses, for example, an airline, might decide to increase their investment in lighter, more fuel-efficient aircraft. The Boeing Dreamliner is a good example. Power companies might try to move away from coal, which Extract uh, B talks about, doesn't it? And shift towards renewable energy. House builders in Britain might look for more innovative ways of building homes with a less of a carbon uh, footprint. In this way, little connective phrase, carbon tax could stimulate an improvement in dynamic Efficiency, a well-known A-level concept, which will have wide benefits. Leave a couple of lines, go to your second point. I'm going to put a second micro point in on this one. So a second micro impact. And again, at the start of the paragraph, make it clear whether it's micro or macro. Okay, if you can make things clear to the examiner, they'll be on your side. Second micro effect of carbon tax is it helps reduce demand for products with high carbon intensity. 
and therefore addresses market failures associated with negative externalities. And then I put a bit of analysis in. Carbon emissions are negative externalities for both production and consumption. In my diagram, a little signpost coming up, we see how marginal social cost differs from private cost, leading to overproduction and a deadweight loss of welfare. There is a case for a carbon tax by making the polluter pay to help internalise the externalities. Consumers would likely face higher prices, and this might be a signal for them to curb their demand, for example, by buying more fuel-efficient vehicles, etc., trying to reduce the amount of waste in their homes. Decisions taken at a micro level by millions of households and thousands of firms can certainly have a big macroeconomic effect. So as the analysis diagram here would be the market failure diagram. Hopefully this is familiar to you as you head towards the exams. Marginal social cost lies above marginal private cost. In theory, there's a deadweight loss shown by the green shaded area. But can you see there the private cost plus the carbon tax would perhaps contract demand towards the social optimum output Q2? Leave a couple of lines and then evaluate. A counter argument is that. Nice little evaluation for us this. A counter argument is... Or if it's a different question, you could talk about a different school of thought in economics would argue that. It's just a nice, neat way, a little segue to get you into another evaluation point. So a counter-argument is that critics of a carbon tax, it would be inequitable. It risks having a regressive effect on relatively poor households who would struggle to pay their bills and their transport costs. A uh, bit of application there. The UK introduces a carbon tax well above the current 18 euro price. This might lead to job losses, and then people will suffer from structural unemployment and perhaps a fall in their real living standards. Much depends, crucially, on how the revenue is used from a carbon tax. Does the government, for example, offer a direct cash payment to consumers to compensate? Does it invest in training? Does it offer a subsidy for home insulation? Or does it use some of the carbon tax money to to help industries that were dependent on coal mining, for example. In other words, how the revenue is used from a carbon tax could be a good evaluation point. My third point is to bring in the macro, because of course this is a synoptic question. And again, I'm signposting at the start of the paragraph. Can you see this? A carbon tax would also have macroeconomic effects. It just sets up the answer. It makes it clear to the examiner where you're heading to in the next few lines. I will focus on the size of the budget deficit. Short, punchy, this is what I'm going to look at, okay? <laughs> I will focus on the size of the budget deficit. Extract two, go back to the extract, says that the UK produced total carbon emissions of 388 million tonnes in 2017. Now, I've done a bit of application here. If a carbon tax of, say, 20, euro, 20 pounds per tonne was introduced, the extract says 388 million. Well, if you multiply 20 pounds by 388, that brings in, by my calculation, 7.76 billion pounds of extra tax revenue. And then I'm going to link that to the fact that Britain's got a budget deficit. Last year it was 42 billion, a bit of wider knowledge. 7 billion pounds would help bring the budget deficit down. It could be the government increased spending on public services, put some more money into healthcare, social care. It could, on the other hand, use the extra money from a carbon tax, perhaps, to reduce taxes elsewhere. This is called revenue neutrality. You increase one tax, but you compensate by cutting another tax. For example, uh, the government might cut national insurance paid by employers. So on the one hand, the carbon tax helps to curb pollution and cut emissions. On the other, um, the lower national insurance might stimulate increased employment, create more jobs. This paragraph, I think, is quite a chunky evaluation paragraph. There's a lot in here. And it is evaluating... Uh, sorry, it is, a, it is a, a, a quite a nice um, bit of economics. Then we have to evaluate that point. So my point is that a carbon tax would help improve the budget deficit, and this could, this could be used productively. I really love this evaluation phrase. I'm sure many people will be using it in the summer. Although, in theory, a carbon tax would raise a substantial amount of extra reven revenue, pardon me, in practice, in reality, the impact would be limited. And then I just explain why. First of all, you're not going to tax everything in the economy. It wouldn't be every industry, presumably. And secondly, if you do impose a tax, the risk is 
that uh, businesses cut back on employment, they make less profit, consumers have less real incomes, and therefore you get less tax coming in from other taxes other than the carbon tax. Indeed, it may well be the case that our, our export businesses become less competitive, perhaps don't get as much inward investment. Some businesses might even shift to other European countries where the emissions trading scheme is perhaps offers, uh, offers a cheaper alternative there. That's my point. And then I'm going to finish, I'm going to finish my essay. If I have time, I'm going to finish my essay with a final reasoned comment. Now, this doesn't have to be long, but if you do have time, it's useful just to, just to, to round things off. So here we go. Even, so, even though some free market economists argue there are strong grounds for the tax on carbon, if the UK acts alone after we leave the EU, the risk is that we might lose some investment and perhaps cause some extra inflation. You can put your opinions in, providing it's backed up with economics. In my opinion, there's a case for all revenue from a carbon tax to be ring-fenced, so that taxpayers know how much is being raised, and, crucially, how it's being spent. And my argument, my argument is that that would support, make, give more public support for maybe a tax, which actually, in most economic arguments, makes some sense, both at a micro and macro level. You need to put a price on carbon to change the behaviour of agents, of firms, of consumers. And actually that little twist at the end is a way of putting a bit of behavioural economics into my answer. So there we go, Here's a, a, we've been through a little suggested answer to a synoptic essay. Lots more of these on the website. Uh, thanks for joining us on this one, and uh, catch you all soon.